Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to my kitchen. Today, I'm gonna to do a few things, but the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grind some chicken. I'm gonna show you how to use, if you have a KitchenAid, I'm gonna show you how to use a KitchenAid grinder. It's not an expensive tool, but it's, it's something that I love because I like to make my own sausage. And so that's what we're gonna to do today. We're gonna to make some sausage, um, and I'm gonna make it out of chicken and bacon. And it's very easy to do, but obviously you gotta have one of these things. So um, I'm gonna show you real quick this is the actual attachment. It's the food grinder for KitchenAid. And it attaches through the nose right here. You flip that up. You unscrew this little bolt. And then here is the, the feed tube. So um, you take this and this is this this turns and, and gets the meat to come from the top to the bottom and it just simply goes in here drops it right in there like that <clears throat> and then there are and then um this is the blade and the blade it's got a square center and see that's got a square on it so that goes in next it would make sense though right because the blade goes next to the meat and then you have two different um um sizes that you can grind that come with this this grinder so here's a smaller one and here's a bigger one for this purpose i like the smaller one so so that just goes right and there are little notches here on the side and little notches here on the side so it just lays in there like that nice and flat and then this top ring goes on tighten it down and now you've got this piece here and that's going to plug in right there and there you have it. You gotta put your bolt back in so that you are gonna secure it in here. And it's ready to go. I'm gonna pull it out a little bit here. And so now I have a just my foil pan and here's the deal. If you don't wanna use a foil pan, don't use a foil pan. The CDC says that foil pans are absolutely fine. To use I use them all the time I am the queen of foil pans and if you don't want to use one don't use one use a regular pan it's just kind of how we go here and um, <clears throat> hang on one second I'm gonna get a knife hold on one second okay so actually what I did was I, I made sure that everything was all cut up now you can completely avoid this step you can buy ground chicken and you can buy um, you can buy Italian sausage and mix with it or you can have just straight ground chicken and use the spices that I'm going to use here You'll see that in a minute um, and make and make the sausage. I just like doing this kind of stuff It's just my thing, you know, so what I'm gonna do and I'm not gonna keep you here for all of this This is what I did. I do want to show you this though. This is This is Bacon ends. Do you see that bacon ends in pieces? Um, it's very inexpensive and I use that when I want to use when I want to make beans or when I want to make bacon and incorporate bacon into one of my um, dishes instead of using the $8 bacon I use that because that will give me actually I mean there's a lot of meat on it as you can see here there's a lot of meat on it it's just the end cuts so they're not pretty so you know as far as a piece that's you know so there's lots of meat on there. It's just not a pretty piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start this. And the other thing is the reason I'm showing you this is because there's a lot of people who have asked me about my KitchenAid and about different things to do with it. So this video is kind of for them. And like I said, when we finish this, which I will not take you through the whole thing, but I will show you how this starts for them. And then um, we'll pick back up when we're spicing it, which is with the stuff that you've already bought. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna turn this on, and you'll see that goes around, but what it's also doing is it's making my blade spin. So I'm going to drop a piece of chicken there, have a plunger, and push that down. And here it comes. This is, I do this as you all know, when I'm making my, my my meatballs and all that stuff. I love ground chicken and I love to do it myself. Um, it's very cost effective. I will tell you that for sure. 
um, because ground chicken is usually somewhere about five dollars a pound now. When I first started buying it, it was like a dollar ninety-nine. Um, but it's not anymore, but of course nothing is. And this is about $1.99 a pound. You just have to grind it yourself. And so, so you just kind of push it through, that's all. And get this one through, and I'll put some bacon through, and then I'll come back to you. And I've just cut this into strips that will fit in the feet or two, that's all. It doesn't take very long to do this whole thing either, actually. Although I'm not going to keep you with me the whole time. Here we go. So now I'm going to put a piece of bacon there. See, that's just one of the bacon ends. And the thing is, I just like the combination of flavors. And it certainly is, woohoo, and it'll spit at you too. I probably should be wearing a I always say that. I probably should be wearing an a apron because Lord knows I have many of them. So now this is the bacon coming through. And so my, actually to tell the other side of that is the point of me adding bacon to this ground chicken or if you do do it yourself at home, um, the point of me adding it is because the chicken is very, very lean. And to tell you the truth, I'm introducing just a little bit of fat to it. I want to do that. so. So let me finish this up and I'll be back. Okay, I wanted to show you the finished product and here it is, the combination um, of chicken and bacon. That took me about six minutes to do all of that whole stuff that I had, so that's not bad at all. Um, again, you don't have to do that though. You can certainly buy it. Um, buy ground chicken and get Italian sausage or, um, or even if you want to uh, stretch there we go and the reason I wanted to show you because I wanted to disassemble it and show you how easy it is to clean this thing up of course having fingers that would actually work and yes I will wipe this don't worry I wipe down my surfaces quite well and so it has this little thing that allows you to, to turn it <laughs> she says but my hands are slippery so so righty tidy lefty loosey all right there we go so unscrew the ring and anything that you have down in here or whatever just put it back in your mix it's no big deal it's all ground ground up small enough anyway then remember this is the the little shaft here that comes out completely so you put that in your dish pan and soak it and get all of that stuff out of there comes clean as a whistle this is a little bit of stuff that bacon that was stuffed in here so I'll use a knife and chop that up and add that back here to the blend so okay I will be back in a second. I'm gonna clean this mess up and I'll be back in a second with a bowl to show you how to spice this and get it ready for, for the freezer actually. Okay, I think we're ready now. So what I wanna tell you is this is what I did myself with the ground chicken and ground bacon as you just saw, but you can buy a pound of ground pork, just already just ground pork, no seasoning, just ground pork and you can buy a pound of ground chicken because the basic recipe for this is um, for two pounds of, of ground ground chicken or ground pork so I have about four pounds here so of course as you know I'm gonna double it the recipe I give you will be for two pounds of meat and um, and so just so you know um, so I'm gonna start and what I'm gonna do is back you up just a little bit I am going to put all of my spices in a bowl first um, and then mix them. You know, I see a lot of times people, you know, put it right on the meat. Well, I feel like when you do that and you don't mix the spices before you put them on the meat, that you might have a lot of cloves in one bite and a lot of sage in another. So 
that's just me. That's just how I do it. So we're going to start with sage. Now, sage to me is the taste of sausage. Um, so, um, ah, see, that smells like sausage to me. So this is calling for, and you don't have, this is not an exact science recipe, by the way. We're not baking. So if you go over a little, don't worry, it's no problem. So this is going to call for three teaspoons of sage. So there's one. Three. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it just a single, and then I'll go away and do it again. So, three teaspoons of sage, um, one teaspoon of granulated garlic, which is right here. Um, you hear me all the, all the time say that I like granulated garlic better than garlic powder or garlic salt. Garlic salt, if you've got salt in something else, you, it's going to be overpowering. You can salt it. I know I'm touching my glasses. And... Um, Garlic, garlic powder to me just tastes kind of um, chemically. So I like granulated garlic. So it is one teaspoon of granulated garlic. And then we're going to go with two teaspoons of, no, I'm sorry, one teaspoon, I'm so sorry, of, of kosher salt and one teaspoon of black pepper. And I always use uh, coarse, uh, blah, 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 coarse black pepper. Um, for, I, don't, I just don't really care for fine ground pepper. So that's what I use. And you've also heard me give my little spiel about um, um, <clears throat> kosher salt, I'm sure. I just think it cooks better, it melts better, and it doesn't have the iodine in it. And so therefore it's not bitter. To me, that's bitter. Um, <clears throat> Uh, brown sugar, one tablespoon. Of course, I don't have one, so we're going to improvise. I'm going to give it a healthy teaspoon. <clears throat> I have one. I have six, but I don't have any over here. So, um, a quarter teaspoon of, of red pepper flakes. Now, I'm going to tell you that red pepper flakes are spicy. My husband and I like spicy. And so, what I'm also going to tell you is if you don't, leave it out. No big deal. And um, a pinch of ground cloves. Now cloves, uh, that's, that's a very powerful um, spice. So I'm gonna just give it a few shakes because I wanna have it a little bit in the background but I don't want it overpowering. And then to this, we're just gonna mix that up because like I said, if you just kinda dump it in there, um, I feel like you're going to get it all um, in one space. So, so let me dump it in here and um, I'll be right back. Okay, we're ready to roll. So, this is the mixture and I just um, mixed it all well so that it, you know, I didn't have any one thing anywhere. And now I'm just going to do this over this whole thing. I'm going to hold off because uh, some of this is by the eye and because I'm doing more than two pounds. If you do two pounds and you follow the recipe, it'll be perfect. So nothing better than your hands. Get in here and, and just, just squish it everywhere. And you know what? This isn't going to taste like Jimmy Dean sausage. I mean, it's not going to taste like that. It is going to taste like a breakfast sausage. Um, but this is what you call your own sausage. So when someone says, ooh, what kind is that? You say, it's mine. And like I said, you can do it with ground, um, ground chicken and ground pork. You certainly don't have to do this. But for all those people who wanted to learn a little bit more about their KitchenAid, I'm going to actually um, show you how to use the pasta attachment on that too. Um, for for those people with the kitchen aid, so I'm adding a little bit more, and like I said, I'm just squishing it down in here like that, making sure all of it gets nice and seasoned. It smells wonderful. I got to tell you that. 
And the end. go so what I have over here what we're gonna do with it once I get this all in there good is we're gonna take one of these two ice cream scoops haven't decided which side I want size I want and we're gonna put it on parchment paper on a cookie sheet and just kind of stack them up you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second and put them in the freezer on a cookie sheet just on parchment tomorrow morning because they will have set up and they'll be nice and hard I will take them off of that parchment and put them into Ziploc bags. So they'll be regular little sausage packets. And you can take out two at a time and cook them. Okay, so hold on. Let me wash my hands and go get the cookie sheet. Okay, so this is what they're looking like. I'm gonna hold them up and see. Sauce, little sausage patties. So I went with this scoop, which was the smaller of the two, and I'm just putting it in here and then putting it down on the uh, paper and kind of smooth, uh, smashing it out. You know, I'm going to turn this around. That might be helpful. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just scooping it out and then um, putting it down on the, the parchment and kind of just pushing it down a little bit to make a patty out of it. row then I'm going to take another piece of parchment and go right over the top of this and start my second row and then I'm going to take this whole and then I'll put a part a piece of parchment over the top to cover because I don't want them to dry out in the freezer and just the same thing just kind of push it down and um, then um, I'll put them in the freezer and let them kind of flash for not flash freeze. It's certainly not flash freezing, but they will they will freeze um, to and then then they will be patties and I can take them out and put them in a Ziploc easier storage. And it's an airtight thing. Um, I'm going to put one of these in the frying pan right this minute. So um, I'll be back to you in a second. Okay, so this is the finished product here. As you can see, there are two layers of that. I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to cover this with another piece of parchment and put it in the refrigerator. P.S. Meanwhile, I did fry me some up some. Oh my gosh, they're so good. I've had people say to me, why don't you ever taste it? Well, sometimes I'm making this stuff in the morning for dinner that night. And um, so I just don't. But this is really good. I really hope you do this. Um, and then I don't want to talk with my mouth full. That's the other thing, too. <laughs> but anyway, the spice mixture will be the recipe, and the blend will be chicken and pork. It's very simple to do, and it's very yummy. You can, you can make the patties like this, but you can also freeze it in, in bulk, and then just kind of, um, you know, make it with fried potatoes or something like that, but... This, for breakfast, is really good. Hope you try it. Bye.